fans are out here early today because it is Championship Sunday. Welcome to Lindenwood University, the Division II Women's Lacrosse Championship. St. Charles, Missouri, Hunter Stadium, playing for the prize national trophy. One of these teams will be taking it home in about two hours. The opportunity for their first national championship in women's so Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Liz alongside Kara Lentz. And Kara, as we look at this matchup, uh, really, excitement on both teams. Solid defense, both offenses. The road to get here was a For their victory against Queens. And that was their second overtime victory in this NCAA tournament, to even getting to the national final. Talk about battle tested. And if you look at UND, they were looking to get revenge on their sole loss of the season. They got that against Adelphi. And this is a UND team that's been knocking on the door for a couple of years now under head coach James Delaney. Leah, we're in for a good one today. Prior to today's championship first draw, U Indy and ESU stand together with their sticks high for a moment of silence, unity, and support. The recent instance involving both Howard University and Delaware State in women's lacrosse. Together we all stand as one to stomp out racism. The skies have cleared. The weather is awesome. The conditions here on the field, superb at Lindenwood University. And we're underway for the 2022 National Championship in Women's Lacrosse. ISO play there for Emily Matitter Tonda, and you see Kara Antonucci. She's going to be a key matchup today against such a stellar player for 24 and Gray. And Kara Antonucci had her work cut out for her when you look at the semifinal game on Friday going up against the top attacker on the opposing team. So you'd no surprise there that that 1v1 matchups by design and a key one to watch play out through the course of this game. Trying to overload a little bit, work off of a heavy screen here as we approach 30 seconds in the shot clock. No whistle called, solid defense there. Ball is loose on the ground. It's gonna go back the opposite way. And it, it's important that ESU here really starts this first quarter out by being settled on their attack and being settled in their play. We saw in that quarter, excuse me, that semifinal matchup, they were a little rushed with the ball against Queens and definitely a running match between the two games to start out the game. So it's imperative that ESU starts this game out on a good tempo and a tempo that they also want to control. I think the possession game is going to be a big factor in today's game. Mitterotanda with the ball, looking for a cutter coming across. That defense has really clamped it down inside the eight. Great mark there by Madison Phillips, number five in black for U Indy. And this is a, a huge asset to how U Indy is able to close out victories is their transition game and their clear game. It's pretty much spotless, and they have a couple of different formations that they have in the clear. You see there Bella Shore, number 15 in black, being able to settle this ball down on the attack. So first offensive opportunity for the Greyhounds as they spread it out. Nice little drop pass. Lagos. Second chance opportunity. Fresh shot clock here for UND as well. Joey Fowler will have the free position.
Clamp down defense. Nice job by ESU and a straight on look. As Romig released that shot, long cleared, it goes back to the Greyhounds. Yeah, in between the 30 yard lines is gonna be a big, big part of this game you're gonna need to key in on. And we had the chance to talk with Mackenzie Gaggin yesterday in their pregame practice. And I'm always curious to know what goes through a goalkeeper's minds when they step when they step up to defend a free position. She says, I try not to overanalyze it, mm -hmm. not to get too much into her head. And that was a great save by Gaggin here to start the game. A pass over the reach of Sato, number 11, right steering down Gaggin. Clear. And a scoop up. Yeah, it's gonna be a battle in between the 30s. Already seeing this play out. Both of these teams very physical, very well coached when it comes to clearing their game and making the ride happen. Riley Taylor there picking it up. It was a double team actually between Romig and Taylor on that play. Good job. But a smart move in regards to ESU as well by trying to start that clear game immediately because of the speed and the physicality that you Indy exhibits in that clear, in that ride, ESU needs to start that ball quickly if the pass is on, if they can settle in their, quack, uh, their attack quickly. Solid double team by the Warriors. Goes back though to the Greyhounds. Klein met with a triple team, draws the shooting space violation. Nicely done, high percentage area for Kara. And just the notion of shooting first and having that, that intention is gonna draw the shooting space call. Sarah Klein is very skilled with the stick and, and just the way that her body is able to line up with the goal cage. And just for you know a sophomore on this team, a huge intelligence when it comes to her lacrosse IQ. There goes Klein, the lefty goes low. And beats Gagnon, the first goal of the game goes to the Greyhounds. Sarah Klein is picking up exactly where she left off on Friday. Had three goals against Adelphi, three ground balls as well, which is a stat that stuck out to me. And just stepping up on that free position at the eight meter, a natural lefty for number 22 in black. Goes low, nice little grounder to find the back of the net to get this UND team started on the scoreboard. Came from defense, defense turning to offense, 53rd of the season for Sarah Klein. One for one on the draws. And that has to be an immediate adjustment for ESU. And this is part of their game strategy as well, is recognizing what adjustments they need to make, especially in a national championship game, and making those around the draw circle. And when you look at you, Wendy, it's not just the initial draw take by roaming. It's the circle play around with Antonucci and Montgomery. And if you just watch these midfielders around the circle before the ball gets put into play, they're steps ahead of the, of the opponent in the midfielder that they're going up against. So ESU has to be able to make adjustments. They have to be able to respond. And more importantly, they have to be able to win the battle on the ground. They want to get that ball on the ground to give them a better chance on the ground ball. Wow, great movement there by Lagos. Tried to go low on Gagan and turned away. Standing tall. And you know, this is different for you and a, a team that can change up the formation of their ride. Sometimes they lay away all the way to the 50 yard line. We saw them do that in their matchup against Adelphi. But instead in this, in this instance, putting that high pressure on the backfield and putting this team under duress before they can even settle on their attack. And you look at the shot clock now, 65 seconds on the shot clock to run your plays. Better Rotunda up top. 
Here's Maddie Hicks, she's got speed and a step. Can she go in? And she beats Moran for the goal. We're knotted up at one. Maddie Heck is the fastest player on ESU's roster, but when you put her in a tight little splice, a fantastic split dodge, changes over to her left hand, quick ball movement here in her stick, keeps her footing and the ball in her stick and finds it just below the feet of Moran. Excellent athleticism and physicality coming from Maddie Heck, and, and this is gonna be the first of many times we're gonna mention her name, as you'll see her be an instrumental role in the clear game, in the transition game for ESU. Grad transfer ties it up at one, her 18th of the season. And that's what UND can do. If, if Romig does not get it on the initial draw, she has her circle players to be able to gain that possession but this is a player that can really pick apart where she wants to place the ball around the circle. And not only that, but the ability to communicate with her midfielders around the draw circle about where she can feel that she can place that ball once it's put in between the two crosses. Just sewn in in the game now for the Greyhounds, 13 in black. Great movement back inside, and Joey Fowler answers within seconds at the opposite end. It's just simple. This is a 1v1 matchup, and Uindy really prides themselves on the defensive and the offensive end, how they match up against ESU. A little tiptoe around the crease. It almost looked like she actually got her foot in the crease there. If you take another look, look at her left foot. A little hard to see there, but this goal stands on the field for now. That's great possession coming from Fowler. And for those of you watching from home, where as you might be able to pick it up on this angle here, Kara. Wow. They looked in on the crease. Playing the powder blue lines around the field today for those of you watching from home on NCAA.com. Three one, the advantage now as Romy picks it out of midair and Ooh. pick back out of midair. Great athleticism there, just jumping up and getting your stick on it. Great response by ESU and it's important for this ESU team off the draw circle, if they can't win the initial one, that they have the ability to redefend immediately in that midfield. And that was a great job and good adjustment by ESU to give their attack. And they haven't had much of a settled attack, Leah. No. You know, since the first possession here in the first quarter, it's already half of this quarter expired. For a flash of a second, Gianna LaDuke was all alone. Teammates wow. opted to look around her and two for two, though, when you have Maddie Heck on your team. <laughs> Why the heck not? Why the heck not? <laughs> Give the ball to her. Just an incredible display of athleticism and, and, and ESU now recognizing the matchups where they can win. So setting this up at the 12 meter for Heck, that's a double split dodge, able to get in again, get the ball over to her left side and place a good shot on net. And I think if you, you kind of have to start to wonder, it, this is a UND team that does split their goalies between uh, usually at halftime. And at this point, would there be a consideration to put Cassidy King mm -hmm. in after the first quarter? James Delaney started this program from the ground up. Spent time with both coaches yesterday. And uh, Zenny Baracos Yoder just as solid for us when we were uh, chatting uh, with her team. We appreciate both coaches and their players' time yesterday afternoon. Uh, great programs. You can tell that these young ladies are going to go on to do some super things. We have a timeout here on the field. 
And, you know, it's just it's incredible, Leah, when you hear about the pursuit in in personal careers for these individuals once they graduated. Mm -hmm. And some of these players, they already have their undergrad done, now pursuing their master's. Some of them even have their master's completed. But it's incredible what these programs have been through over the past two years with COVID, even some of the younger players having their senior year of lacrosse season taken away from them in high school and their freshman year. And it's just incredible how much these head coaches as well vouch for their kids, vouch for the programs, and, you know, to give them the uh, unique student-athlete experience. And it's really incredible. Young lady holding the ball right now for ESU, Kaylee Perkirka, is a nurse and uh, took PTO <laughs> to be able to play this championship weekend. Um, yeah. And that just absolutely works at Lehigh Valley Hospital, um, you know, Coach said she had all the qualities. Coach Yoder was telling us she has all the qualities to be a captain. But they sat down with her, and she understood where they were coming from uh, based on the responsibilities that she now has uh, in her career path. And unfortunately, the turnover there will go back to Quinn Malcolm and her Greyhound teammates on the restart. Great stick check coming in from behind was Gianna LaDuke. You really have to have your attack be involved in that clear game and the transition game and giving you Indy some difficulty here before they can settle. Trying to clear a, a little bit of space there for Lagos. And nothing going, the ball quickly back here to the Warriors. And if they look up here, they've got Maddie, uh, Maddie Heck all alone. She is now picked up in the midfield. Mita Rotunda looking for a cutter. Trying to cut herself back inside. Flag is up. Call is made on a hold. And Mitterrand is going to challenge that 1v1 all day long. This is a natural dodger you have for ESU and just the mentality to score. She really play, She puts it as simple as that. I just want to get the ball in the back of the net. Has taken an incredible amount of time before practice and after practice to work on her shooting percentage, to work on her shot, sh shot selection, and really put this into her arsenal of herself as an attacker. Gave a lot of credit to the assistant coach, Rachel Ward, and the amount of time that they'd put an in together on the practice field every day. Warriors decide to pop it back out. Great athleticism there by Heck. Knocked away, though, by Vey. And Moran scoops it up. And you're going to see UND be able to break out the ball, and they're clear in a couple different formations. And if the ball is being passed and that initial pass on the clear all the way back in their defensive end, they're going to try to get into the stick of Amy Vey or Kara Antonucci and use the speed of those players to settle it on their attack. They have great composure going in between the 30s, and ESU has given them a lot of trouble there before they can settle. Really pushing towards the sidelines. And a whistle call there. The ball will come back for Montgomery to start back up again. Malcolm gaining some speed. Lagos, a little hesitation, long step. Wow, incredible stick work coming from Lagos. Such athleticism in that player. Here's Klein from up top. 
And also great pressure defense coming from Maggie Sell. Excuse me, Kristen Andrzejczyk. It's a good stand by ESU's defense. Possession game's gonna be huge, and it's not just the game clock. I mean, it's also how these teams are gonna be able to run their offense. We saw Uindi in that semifinal win against Adelphi really use the shot clock to their advantage and, and be able to possess the ball for the entirety of it. And ESU knows that about Uindi, so they wanna be able to have a strong footing and have a strong front, front on each of those possessions. Pakrivka tried to lace one inside the eight. It was picked off there by Sato. Little bit of space, just a hair of a space for Sato. Klein scoops it back up. Rumig met by a double and partial triple team. Good job by the defense of the Warriors. And they pride themselves on working as a unit. That's been a big focus for them throughout the course of the season. It's just to play together, play as a unit. But most importantly, this is a team that thrives when they have fun and also thrives in chaos, <laughs> as we've seen in the overtime wins that ESU has, um, has had in order to get into the championship today. They like to make a chaotic experience and environment for the other team on the opposing end, but they like to be in that, and they usually win in those circumstances. So a team that really thrives and, and works together as a unit. Nice job by Gagnon on the save. Made it look easy. The outlet now. And a foul called. And it's going to get really physical along the sidelines, too, because both of these teams are strategic in how they run between the 30s. So we see a lot of that physical play happening right along the sideline. Better Rotunda kept her cool, though. And the Warriors will go to work here. Heck already has two goals on the day. Just Loses off. it on the yeah. ground, gets it back up. Hot potato. Little flip to Merotunda now. Looks to go on Antonucci, goes low, bounces away. <laughs> 28 seconds on the shot clock, a minute now to go in the first quarter of play. And how about that, very patient were the Warriors. Merotunda with a goal, her first of the game. Merotunda is gonna continue to challenge that 1v1 with Uindy's top defender and Kara Antonucci. And if you look at what she was able to do in that semifinal game against Queens, four goals on the day on 10 shots. That was the most of any player on the field. So she will continue to try to win that matchup, to get inside the eight meter and do something for her team. And this is a player that is just a gamer. She's a competitive person. She gets into the competition and she wants to win every single time that her team touches the ball. You want that type of competitor on your team in a national championship game. 87th of the season, back-to-back -back goals for the Warriors. So the shot clock is off, 53.7 seconds now to go in the first quarter of play. A solid opportunity in an area of the game that has hurt the Warriors thus far in the draw, if they can gain control. Oh, that's a battle between Antonucci and Heck right along the restrainer. That was borderline going high enough, too, on yeah. the draw. Yep. Plenty of time. Here come the Warriors. 
And unfortunately, that will go back. There's still time left here. 20 seconds now. They can pick it up and get it downfield quickly. Nice job on their takeaway there in the middle of the field. And so one quarter is in the books. The Warriors coming out here and taking quarter number one. Two goals by Maddie Heck. And they lead it after one quarter of play here in the national championship game from Lindenwood University. We will have a new national champion in Division II women's lacrosse today, a first opportunity-wise for both of these schools playing for that beautiful trophy that Kira and I had an opportunity to spend a little time with this afternoon before the game, talked to it a little bit, praised it a little bit. It's a special day. It's heavy. The, it's heavy. It's a <laughs> very special day for the student athletes as they have the opportunity to take it back to their schools, share it with their programs and their institution in about two hours from now. First quarter play, anything glaring surprise you? Turnovers on both sides of the ball, on both sides for, or excuse me, for both teams. I think there were some careless turnovers in the transition game. And I think for both sides that needs to be cleaned up a little bit. ESU was starting to settle on their attack and, and have some more time with the possession and the shot clock. So that was an improvement for ESU. And ESU is also, starting to take control of these draw controls, which is a huge adjustment for this team against a UND team, which is some of the best in the nation. Back-to-back -back draw control wins, four to three. Now the advance and the low jump and the score there for the Warriors. As they respond quickly, Kara, off of the drop, not working into that shot clock at all. You can also see the frustration coming from Moran after that shot. ESU is, is really finding a capability to pick apart this defense for UIndy and find the back of the net. This is just great patience and composure. Madison Begata finds the opening, beats the 1v1. And this is an area of the game where UND really prides themselves is in their matchups. But to start this second quarter, ESU showing a lot of strength in winning those 1v1s, winning the matchups, and it all starts from the draw control. Three unanswered goals. They have scored three of the last four goals. And for uh, Bogata, that's her 27th and now it, of the season. And, and again, Leah, I have to go back to at what point do you put Cassidy King in for Uwindy? This is a, a team that splits equal just about playing time between the two goalkeepers, Cassidy King and an upperclassman on this team, a complete leader and mature person that we were, had the opportunity to talk with yesterday. You know, do you want to give that? Do you want to give that All-American a chance to come into the national championship game at this point and, and try to have some better defense there on your defensive end? King is up with her helmet on on the sideline. We'll see if. The Warriors can make a stop here in a stand. It would be a tough, tough effort as Riley Taylor trying to cut back inside. Quinn Malcolm draws the shooting space violation. And that's where UND has had a lot of success on their attack is drawing that shooting space. Quinn Malcolm was operating from the interior of the eight in the quarterfinal matchup today, really working the 12 meter. Lagos, three second violation.
Peyton Romig now from the eight. Romig answers. The player for this UND team that just understands how to get it done, whether you put her up on the draw circle, you put her at the free position. She had two for two on her free position opportunities in the quarterfinal game against Adelphi. And it looks like it may have been deflected actually off of an ESU defender stick and ricocheted into the back of the net. Also, it seemed like she went a little soon off of that free position hash. Nonetheless, here is UND pulling within one goal and just give it right back to Roaming. <laughs> Absolutely. so many details about the draw specialty and just recognize and witness how each draw specialist takes it. You, the eyes are in different locations. Some people look at the official, some players look at each other, other players look at, look at the stick and the ball placement in the stick. But once you get a feel of where the ball is, then you start to communicate with the draw, uh, the, the circle players around you, and you can start to communicate in your own language about where you think you can pull that ball. I mean, it's just such a unique position that requires a lot of work. Strong wrists. One of the key attributes is the Greyhounds come out of it and look to try to tie this game back up here off of this possession. Greyhounds with seven shots on the game on Gagan. And you see Maddie Heck there pulling that double team that forces a bad pass by Lagos. And here's ESU blazing speed in the transition game. Quick ball movement, wow. much faster, and <laughs> cut off there by Moran. Oh my goodness, she went to pass. <coughs> excuse me, pass it out, and it came out of her stick. Risky, and she needed to make a play to give herself some confidence in the defensive end. She read that beautifully, and when you have some active goalkeepers, they can take those risks with certainty and come on and almost be an additional defender, especially when you had numbers down situation, she was almost forced to come out and make a play. Definitely a confidence booster in that cutoff of that pass. Lagos looking for Malcolm, trying to spin through three up over the top. Unique park unique part of ESU scouting was their capability to really pack the eight mm -hmm. on their defense and they're aware of how Malcolm and Klein and a couple of their attackers here for UND can pack inside the eight meter which is risky because it can cause confusion on the defense you can be called for three seconds if you're two players marking one Fowler I don't even know where that bounced <laughs> off of Leah I thought that was in the back of the net Now that came flying out. Yeah. <laughs> All the way back to the 12 meters. It's crazy. <laughs> Pakrivka, nice pass. It's one thing the Warriors have done very well their last two possessions, just get it up the field with passing, not carrying the ball. That physical play coming around the restraining line. And ESU here with under 30 seconds on that shot clock to run their attack.
Foul call from behind X, and they'll give the Warriors the ball. A little bit <clears throat> of a uh, low percentage area there. The illusion of everyone going in one direction and the opposite way. Excellent defense coming from Amy Vay, number 14 in black. Slid at the right time, but also if you set your feet and you set your body right as, as the attacker has the ball looking to shoot, you're not going to call for that shooting space. It's excellent preparation, and Vay just works so nicely with the other defenders around here. Really like to see what this player can do on the defensive end. Lagos, number 10. Looking for Klein. Ducked her head just enough. <laughs> nope, I'm not saving that. <laughs> And Klein is a player that has versatility both on the defense end, defensive end and the offensive end. Can fire a shot from the free position, but you put her in the middle of the eight with, let's count how many defenders, one, two, three, almost four defenders. Gets it into a mid-hip or mid-rise range and is able to find the back of the net. And I just loved to hear what this player had to say in their pregame meeting yesterday about finishing the job. This is a team that has worked really hard to get where they are, but they're not treating this game any, or the, any differently than the previous games this season or even dating back to the fall ball. And if you look at UNE, if they're prepped for the big stage, a team that schedules Division I schools in the fall and a team that also has great situational awareness because their head coach, James Lane, and his coaching staff have situational Saturdays and a team that's well coached, they're put into every single situation. So by the time that the spring comes along, it's just an oral review of how you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to play, the scenarios you'll be in when it comes to the spring, where the freshmen aren't freshmen anymore by the time that the, the spring comes along. And this is a team that knows the answers to a test before they take it. That's what their head coach had to say about them, just incredible awareness and maturity from this UND team. Sarah Klein now with two goals already in this young game. She started the scoring off on that free position, Kara, and picking up her 54th now of the season. Trying to clear something out here for Lagos. Nice job by the defense. Switching up. Lagos still with the ball. Trying to work off. Klein is Lagos now. Great side there by yeah. Rotonda, right along the eight meter. ESU's defense doing a stand up job with that help uh -huh. slide slide. And that rebound coming off of Gagan again and right mm -hmm. into the hands of the Warriors. Look at that, nicely red. And the Warriors are back up by one. And Sophia Grafeo who had the game winner in that overtime match against against Queens, just understands to take the 1v1, but Madison Bogata, excuse me, taking that 1v1 and, and noticing where she beat her defender, Romeg, and that's just a simple stutter step, able to cut back inside, and Romeg just didn't have the body control 
to stay within that play. That gives a 1v1 with Audrey Moran. And you have to start to wonder still at which point Cassidy King will be put into this matchup. But got a second of the game. As Pagata and Romig go after it. Wow. Just grabs it straight out of the air. Not only that, the, the incredible thing about Kara Antonucci is her ability to be aware of where the sideline is and to get into an area of the field where she can be successful. And look at this opportunity now. Good job and focus and concentration by Antonucci to even find Sados. And we will have our first card of the game. Which is kind of surprisingly. I mean, both of these teams are really physical and smart with their with their defense and their offense, but have been very diligent and not fouling. And with Carrie Antonucci, this is a player that had committed to go to Arizona State when she was 15 years old in high school. And since she settled into UND, she said, this is exactly the place where I was meant to be. And, and also transferred in with Audrey Moran, yeah. who graduated high school early in, jo in order to join the team in the spring of 2020. And their teammates saying that both of those players just had a seamless transition to come to the program at UND. Greyhound's trying to be patient to tie this one up. Working off the player advantage now. Better movement of the ball. Here's Malcolm trying to be patient. Ricochets off the post. Sados. Romig's pushed. Oh, that's going to leave a bruise. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Good ball movement there by Lagos. Excuse me, Lagos being able to come up with the ground ball, keep that play alive, try to find an open player. And here is Romig, a dynamite player. Already one for one on the free position. Was two for two on Friday. She's dynamite at the eight meter. Romig bounces it in, makes it look easy. A little sidewinder. Take a look back at the way that Romig was fouled on this play right along the eight meter. With that double team coming from ESU. Quick step off of the free position. Bouncer low shot past Gagan. And if you're Gagan, that's got to be a hard shot and a hard player to defend against when you know how prolific and scoring Romig can be when she's at the eight meter. You want your scores and you want your contributors on the attack to step up on the free position in a national championship game and execute. That's exactly what Romig has done. Fifth tie. Second of the game for Romig, who steps back now into the draw circle with Bagata. 6.20 to go in the second quarter of play. That was a, a releasable, obviously releasable yellow card. So we're back to even strength now. Grifka doing a nice job. She's had a number of ground balls, key ones today. That is her fourth. Heck has two goals already in the game. Midrotunda up over the top. Scoop back and brought back in to Moran.
Five minutes to go in the second quarter. But only 47 seconds left now on the shot clock. Good job defensively by the Warriors here. Klein flips it to Sados. Loose on the ground. Sato picks it up. Now the Greyhound's having some trouble keep, keeping control of the ball here. Got a hurry! I'm not sure UND had any idea how much time was ticking down on that shot clock just by the amount of time they were taking mm -hmm. while passing the ball, but Great stance by ESU on the defense, and that started all the way in the transition game. And you see the confidence that ESU has when they're stepping up beyond the 12 meter as a unit with the double team. And that's exactly what stood out to me. And their semifinal game against Queens was just with the uh, tenacity that they went with after the ball as a unit. And you can start to see UIndy being a little less confident and driving to the net on the attack. Ooh. Wow. Yep. Straight to the head there. I believe her goggles popped off as well. <laughs> Take another look here with the strong defense coming in for you, Wendy. And you're going to see that Sato gets the ball, but just gets a stick directly to the eyes. Coming from ESU. Well, she you can tell she's she's smiling with the way that uh, her mouth guard is right now, so that's always a great sign. Taking a little extra second there. <coughs> Under three minutes to go here in the second quarter of play. And, you know, if you're you, Wendy, with the amount of pressure that they're getting from ESU and the double team, they have to be able to move the ball a lot quicker. So they have to increase their ball movement and the pace of it and not allow ESU any time to get their defense in the way. And ESU's defense is playing with an incredible amount of confidence. And working really well. This is a team that goes into a zone when they have a player down situation. Very fluid in that process. Still moving together as a unit. Romig does it. Draws the violation. As Kara mentioned, the Greyhounds are three for three on three positions today. Just a little slow in that release coming from Romega, and this is now a, a situation where she is set up from the free position in the same exact hash. So if you're gagging, you start to understand the tendencies of a shooter and Romega, and you can really get a step ahead before the shot's taken. Peter Rotonda will now wait for some personnel to come out here on the field. Get that attack ready with uh, about 140 to go in this second quarter. Heck. Already has two goals on the day. She got the scoring going a little bit earlier. Flashed wide open here now. Mm 
And look at Maddie Hack chasing her down <laughs> all the way in the midfield. Came back from the crease, keeps the pressure on. Just incredible to watch in between the 30s. Montgomery looking to outlet it here is about 53 seconds to go now. Keep an eye on 77 Fowler. They'll run a double stack up top here. 20 seconds, they're going for one. Roaming. They get it in Klein's hands, the lefty flips it. Lagos back up top and intercepted. Warriors have to move quickly and intercept it back again. Great defensive effort by both teams in the final minute of play. And they will head to the locker rooms tied at five. We will step aside here on NCAA.com. You're watching the 2022 Division II Women's National Championship game in lacrosse. Welcome back to Lindenwood University, our host for the Division II Women's Lacrosse Championship, the home of the Lions, where we find UND and East Strasburg tied at five to start the third quarter of play. Kara, each team with their opportunities early. The draw circle has been where the differential is as we take a look at our first half highlights from this one. East Stroudsburg getting out to a really good start due at the hands of Maddie Heck. She had two big goals to start the first and second quarter. And UND, not as much offensive production in the second quarter, but you see Fowler there able to convert for the Greyhounds. And Heck is really good with the 1v1 matchup at this point in the game. And they continue to go to the attacking midi in order to notch some goals. Roadmake has had her fair amount of chances from the free position strike two for three on the day so far doing excellent in that category throughout this tournament. You went, taking a look at the stats from the first half of play, the shot differential and draw circle, uh, certainly indicative of the power that the Greyhounds has had. They just have not been able to capitalize in that area or capitalize on the 12 turnovers by the Warriors. And the glaring statistic here for me as well is the amount of state uh, saves. Mackenzie Gagan already with eight saves on the day. That's as many saves as she had in the semifinal win against Queens. And of course, as UIndy has done throughout the course of this season, Cassidy King, the senior All-American, now switched in uh, for the goalkeeper position for UIndy. Number 23 steps back in goal. UND a, a little bit late getting out from the uh, halftime talk. They decided to go back into the locker room area. The Warriors decided to go down to the far side of the field. We are into the third quarter of this national championship game. We will have a first time winner in women's division two lacrosse this afternoon at the conclusion of this one. Both of these teams know that, too. There's a lot of pride here for both of these squads and programs, the university, the athletic department, in order to capture their first lacrosse championship. And ESU's defense has been doing a spectacular job against Abigail La Lagos, one of the best attackers you're going to see across the nation in Division II, but has not had an opportunity to even get inside the 8-meter 
with the defense coming from ESU. Follow over the top, goes wide. Taylor took a glance at the shot clock. That one goes down on the ground and scooped up, but we have a whistle prior to that. A lot of pressure coming from Maggie Sell, number 21 in gray for ESU, right along the goal line extended. And UND is uncontested, excuse me, has been contested with even getting inside the eight meter. I think ESU slide and, and their man defense working really well. Excellent thus far as Riley Taylor will hold possession of the ball 10 seconds on the shot clock. Smart move, getting it up top. Trying to go low and going to the ground. <laughs> Isato for the goal, nice job. Yeah, Abigail Lagos just mentioned how she hasn't been in able to get inside the eight, so why not shoot from the 12 meter? That's exactly what she did as she was falling down to the turf, is able to find that far post with the riser shot. So much power that this player has behind her capability to take shots. The Great Lakes Valley region attacker of the year. She's so natural with her stick. What a great view of just the difficulty of that shot going down to the turf, still able to pull it off. Excellent, excellent play by number 10 in black. 91st goal of the season for Lagos. ESU quick to come off of that draw circle. This is exactly what they wanted to. They want to get the ball on the ground and be able to play those 50-50 balls, those hustle plays and the ground balls. They've been, they've had some success here uh, on that draw circle. Pakrivka doing a nice job to get that ball over the 30 for her teammates. Heck changing hands, trying to go inside, met by a double team. Mid Rotonda up top. Nice job, give the assist to Fitzpatrick. Mid Rotonda with a goal for the Warriors as they respond back quickly. Beautiful play coming from ESU's attack. They knew this possession game coming into the matchup would be big on the day. And this is just a great feed inside to Matita Rotonda, who knows when to cut, who knows when to break away from her defender. Just a natural sense of how she can read the defense. And then Kiki Fitzpatrick being very patient with the ball. And UND's defense a little static with their with their movement and not being able to pick up those players running through the eight meters. So the communication here for UND has to pick up. Bogata and Romig will set in. Romig in black has had the advantage, 11 to three, the differential on the draws. And Romig just an incredible career when you look at what she's been able to do on the draw control. 917 career draw controls coming into this game. Incredible. She has now won nine in this game. Hard contact her for two going down to directly to the turf after that draw control. Getting a lot of contact. Skyler Constantino into the game for 
you windy something you pointed out Kara they haven't they haven't sub they didn't sub in that yep. first half of I, play I did a double take looking at the stat sheet here at halftime but no substitutions for you windy Lagos's shot is off but it will be retained as Fowler goes in the flip to Klein on the opposite side and, and excuse me Malcolm and speaking of substitutions when you look at ESU's team this is a team that's been plagued by ACL injuries this season six total on the year so they're not that deep no. in their roster or rotations either Abby Lagos was racing in she'll retain possession of the ball let's see if she'll use Skylar Constantino up top 13. Who certainly has a much better angle outside the 12, Kara. <coughs> Situational awareness here for UND. Lagos races in, shows it, backside, comes back out for the save. Low percentage shot, just trying to take that 1v1 into the crease. You have to just work the play, work with the numbers, and work with your team to get a better shot. Nice job by Maggie. Sell through traffic. No call on the ground was Gianna LaDuke. And I think every, everybody kind of paused for a second, but Tindertunga with the ball now. That ball comes back out to the top. <laughs> Maddie Heck slams her hand down back and forth saying, we got to settle in here. That's going to be a moving pick, yep, on ESU behind the net. That's a good call. Good call there. Seeing it, Kara. Yeah, you just have to stay stationary on those picks, especially on ball. UND, though, with a lot of ground to cover <laughs> on their clear yeah. games, turning yep. all the way back from the baseline. Montgomery is just a, a very talented defender, number 16 in black, and her teammates said that she has the best endurance on the team. Kara Antonucci, the fastest player, but she was quick to mention the endurance that 16 in black has. Doesn't come off the field. It can really travel with the ball in between the restraining line. And when you look at this game of lacrosse and what it requires physically, that, that says a lot in your endurance. Flag was up as there was a ton of traffic out in front. <clears throat> Kylie Manser also into the game for U Indy number eight as they set up. Sato now. Sato. Waiting for the whistle. Staring down Gagnon. Flips it. Oh, Quinn Malcolm gets rocked to the ground. That was a hard pass to pull off. Oof. And yeah, Quinn Malcolm was met by three ESU defenders. That's pretty solid e um, free position defense here for the Warriors. Malcolm trying to race in the middle now. Tried that little behind the back flick that she had success with on Friday. Turning inside and plowing over everyone was Joey Fowler. And it will go the opposite way. Yeah, I think if you're you, Wendy, I've seen three plays now where it's just a 1v3. I think these players are trying to take that 1v1 matchup, a 1v3 matchup. Mm -hmm. If you're you, Wendy, ESU's defense is beating you in that matchup. You have to be able to move the ball around. You have to get ESU on the move and, and work your ball movement, work your cycling around the 12-meter, give yourself a better, better chance. And ESU is 
getting more and more confident as this game continues to play out. Bit of Rotunda trying to beat Antonucci here. Wow. Antonucci with the cross check. Mitterthunder right into the stick of Cassidy King. Excellent defense by Kara Antonucci. Just the footwork, the determination, the persistence, and also the knowledge and the confidence that you have your All-American goalkeeper right behind you. Force your attacker into a bad shot, bad shot and you have confidence that your player is going, your goalkeeper is going to be able to come up with a big save. And you, Wendy, a little more, a little different strategy here on the clear. You're going to have Cassidy King come up almost to the 50-yard line. And you're going to have the cycling come up the lanes and on the wings with different players showing. But look at ESU right now. 50 seconds only to shoot on the shot clock. You, Wendy, not in a beneficial position right now on the clear. They, they have to be able to move the ball up the field a lot quicker. ESU is just stifling. 30 jo seconds to shoot. Joey Fowler comes up with that loose ball and ball knocked away defensively from Bella Shore. Nice job by Bogata on the check. This is going to come all the way back, though. And uh, we will have a yellow card distributed on the play to Joey Fowler. So Fowler will take a seat. Excellent stick check coming from Bogata. Great composure. Newfeld is broken up. Antonucci with the outlet to Quinn Malcolm. If they hurry, they can find Riley Taylor in a flash, but a nice job there on the outside of the double team. Uh, it's going to be another card issued here for ESU, and, and this is an important one because that's going to be the third of the game for ESU. So the next card issued here for ESU will be an unreleasable penalty. Maddie Heck picks up the yellow card. Lagos trying to use that quick footwork. Here's Klein. The lefty rolls back to the outside. Nice job defensively, but the foul is called. That was good defense. That was excellent defense. Mm -hmm. And then I think if you're an attacker and you start to back into the defense and the ball pops out. You got the lefty to go right in the direction yep. you wanted to, to the outside. Mm -hmm. But Klein's got a great spot here. Up top. And we'll stare down Mackenzie Gagan. Rips it, all eyes upon it, and gathering it in here quickly for the outlet. Here come the Warriors. Well, I think Mackenzie Gagan's strategy of not trying to overanalyze the free mm -hmm. position <laughs> is working in her favor. And, you know, speaking with a couple of the players yesterday after practice, Gagan and KP being two of those, Gagan was really soft-spoken, very quiet off the field. But when she's on the field, she's one of the loudest people that you'll hear for ESU. Now, foul call before that. 
I was going to say that looked far too easy as everybody stopped and it did go into the net. Now the officials will talk about it. It will be a free position. Emily Matitarotondo stepping up to take this free position. Mirotunda goes low, and this time it counts a hat trick and the lead for the Warriors. Back to back goals for Mirotunda. This is good composure here for Matitarotonda. Starts low, brings it up high, that takes the goalkeeper's eyes all the way up. And then try to come down on that low bounce shot, that low ground shot for Matita Rotana. It's excellent, excellent ball placement coming from the sophomore sensation. And had a freshman year that was, you know, a really standout performance coming from this player. Got experience in the NCAA semifinal. And here she is continuing her capability to help out her attack, get on the scoreboard here in her sophomore campaign and help lead this ESU team to a national championship. Seven six, U Indy, a woman up still with five thirty five to go here in the third quarter. The winner takes home the Division Two National Championship. Lagos. Romig's got room and right into the pocket of Gagan. One step too close and a nice step out there by Mackenzie Gagan. Yeah, and, and even when the play and the ball was behind the goal line extended, Gagan was even cheating up a little bit in the crease. So she's really anticipating to, to be a little more aggressive inside the crease and step up for the intercept. It was a great read by Gagan. It has been standing on her head in this match to keep ESU's defense within this. Cassidy with Cassidy King with the big save at the opposite end. Back and forth. The goalkeeper stepping up here late in this game. King telling us yesterday that she's already been accepted to the police academy in Florida. We'll be heading off once the season is complete to start her career in law enforcement. And player who just talks about the amount of trust that this team has with each other and just how close this team is off the field, the amount of time that they spend with each other outside of lacrosse, outside of classes, and also the capability of this team to adapt with any situation. And here they are, <laughs> down a goal in the third quarter, so they need to be able to adapt on, on their attack and on their defense and, and fight back in this. Hard whistle there as the ball will be retained off of the foul on the sideline, the far sideline from the fans, that is, near sideline of the benches. Defense! 
Mitter Rotunda already with three goals on the day, looking for a cutter to flash up front. Nothing, changing hands, going away from Antonucci. And King with the save. Wow. Great defense here by UND. The last two attempts from ESU's attack have come up empty-handed. Now, if you're UND, you really have to push with a little bit more urgency here. ESU has been excellent in denying UND in their clear game. That's going to be a yellow card here taken out. So, again, this is an unreleasable penalty for ESU. Madison Bagata picking up that yellow card that Kira referred to. So trailing by one in possession of the ball as we close on two minutes of this third quarter of action in the national championship game. Big possession here for the Greyhounds. They get it into Klein's hands. Up top is UND works it around. A little bit quicker now with the pace and the motion and the hit is Lagos and Abby Lagos once again goes to the ground. Yeah, and then that contact came out of her initial shot fake. Excellent speed and execution on that shot fake and stick skill. And a player that plays really, really hard, so she's going to be able to draw the contact, get the foul, give her a chance, give her a chance at the free position stripe. And, you know, this is a player that, that will fire from that 12 meter. And as we saw earlier, really good at, at the riser shot from the hip mid-range. See what she pulls off here. Abby Lagos staring down. Gag goes up over the top. In the upper 90, it ties it back up. I think Abigail Lagos was putting on a shooting clinic here today for you, Wendy's. Just such a sweet spot for her to find that top corner. And you see, you can just sense the velocity that she had on that shot because Gagan was way behind that with getting her stick up in the right area. Very deceptive on her shot release too. So that buys her a couple of milliseconds. And just an area of the field that you put in a lot of individual work is a free position. And it's a lot of its skill, but some of it's the mentality too and having that killer instinct when you have the ball in your cross. Lagos with... The two goals this quarter for the Greyhounds. Romig has now won 11 of the 14 one draw controls by Uindy in this game. New Indy here with a unique situation. Still a player up advantage because ESU with their unreleasable penalty. So talk about late quarter execution from U Indy being able to step up on the free position, winning the ensuing draw. And then here with the player up with plenty of time to tick down underneath a minute to get something on the scoreboard. Romig rips it wide. And Riley Taylor picks it up. A little quicker now, Lagos. To Romig back up top. Maddie Heck doing a great job marking 
Quinn Malcolm in the center of the eight meter and number seven in black was a, a player that was able to receive passes inside the eight and get on the scoreboard frequently and prolifically in that semifinal matchup. But Maddie Heck doing a great job in taking her out of the game today. Romig on the free position to Lagos, trying to shuttle it low, nothing there, triple team. Has to work it back out, 18 seconds. Klein, it bounces it in. Um, there were a couple things working here for ESU's defense too. And when you look at a player like Abigail Lagos, who's so dominant with her right hand, she's not gonna go left. So if you can force her into the right corner of your eight meter, she's not gonna switch over to her left hand and try to place a shot. So Lagos just pulls the ball back out on the 12 meter. And with the player up situation, you gotta be able to find that open pass, that open player. Klein was about 30 seconds ready <laughs> to receive this ball and place a good shot on net. Low bouncer to the, the, to the corner. And this team, we saw this on Friday too, Leah, with their ability to score with seconds clicking down on the shot clock. And this team can really execute in a late game situation or, late, or later on the shot clock. 10.5 seconds to go, back-to-back -back goals by U Indy taking advantage of the yellow card non-release at Klein's third of the game. Enough time if they race in. See if Antonucci uses her speed here. Denied. Not quick enough. And that will do it for three quarters of play. 15 minutes. We will crown a national champion in women's Division II lacrosse. We will step aside and be back for the finish. Welcome back to Lindenwood University, St. Charles, Missouri. It's been our host this weekend. What a great job the host institution has done to make all of the teams participating this weekend feel extra, extra special. We appreciate everything that Lindenwood has done to uh, make us feel at home in the broadcast booth. Leah Sicando and Carol Lentz with you. And 15 minutes from now, we will be crowning a national champion champion in Division II women's lacrosse. Right now the Greyhounds holding on to a one goal lead over the Warriors. We are back to even strength. And Kara, the uh, goalkeeping actually in that third quarter of play was outstanding on both sides. Defense did lead to offense. The final two trips down the field for the Greyhounds. Both of these teams doing an excellent job on the defensive end. I thought ESU's defense, even though UND was able to claw back into this and take the lead, I, I thought ESU's defense was phenomenal throughout the in the entirety of the third quarter. So they need to keep that momentum up. And UND, when, when given the chance, they've been able to step up to the free position or the player up situation and, and be able to convert. But the draw is where it starts for either team. Greyhound's going to be just as happy here to take some time off of the shot clock. Lagos gets it up to Klein. Wow, steps through that double team. What a goal. The engineer of that train got going in Sarah Klein and found the back of the net on the rip. Sarah Klein, a, a player who has tremendous potential in a career set of her. She wants to be a nurse and anesthesiology. And you can see here just numbing the competition on that play, splitting the defense, keeps it in her left hand, finds the opposite post. Whew. It's not going to put you to sleep, is it? No. It's going to keep you awake. It is. <laughs> 
Fourth of the game for Klein, 56th of the season, and the third unanswered goal by the Greyhounds. And wonderful commitment of Sarah Klein and what she was able to do during the fall, she said, with her pursuit of doing uh, nursing, that she missed a lot of fall practices. Um, but still, you know, was able to contribute to this team to be involved as, as much as she could. And her nursing career is a big part of, of who she is. She said it's definitely hard, but this is something that she has identified with and wants to pursue. So can't talk enough about the off-field commitments of these student athletes you see on the field today. Absolutely. Two nurses on the field that uh, are already at it uh, in the hospital setting. Kaylee, Kaylee Prohifka for on cue, <laughs> intercepts the ball. She heard you. For ESU, Sarah Klein for UND. Maddie, here, Maddie Heck has been kept kind of in check there, Kara, yeah. since the beginning of the game. Ever since the first quarter, uh, there's been a great response here from UND's defense, but U ESU is going to continue to challenge that. Maddie Heck creating the 1v1 ISO right outside the 12 meter. You have a lot of different midfielders and attacking middies here for ESU that can do a lot of, uh, have a lot of creativity when they, when they are given the go-ahead 1v1 dodge from the 12 meter. Bella Shore a little bit too aggressive on that check, so she'll be placed behind off of the foul. Great slide on the double team there. Carol referring to number four, Antonucci. Loose ball inside. Three black jerseys there, and a nice job by Peyton Romick to come out of the pile with the ball. And you see the pressure here from ESU's defense. I really like when ESU can put that high pressure on. And if they can come away with a turnover here outside the 12 meter and they break away with speed on that counterattack, that bodes well for this ESU team. And they've been pretty seamless in the transition game. KP, one of the big players that's been able to set that ball down on the attack. And Coach James Delaney stepping down towards the 20, shouting out play for his attack. Good adjustment there by ESU's defense, making sure that they knock it. Whoa! Out. Abby Lagos <laughs> rips a shot through two defenders. And I think that came as a bit of a surprise. Yeah, it was mid-sentence. <laughs> that came <laughs> as a surprise. Hat trick now for Lagos. And with that, three-goal cushion by the Greyhounds. Four unanswered goals. Well, Kara, ESU forced to take a timeout with the way that uh, the Greyhounds have just been attacking Mackenzie Gagne and the defense, great effort there by Sarah Klein. I mean, the, the shooting capability of UND at this point in the game has really been remarkable. And look at the quick release of that. Lagos, seeing that the slide was coming by ESU, sees a clear shot, decides to take it, and UND continuing exactly where they left off, running that draw control. Excellent speed there by Kara Antonucci. And it's not just Romig on the initial draw. And Antonucci and Montgomery, huge part of the Greyhound success this season on that draw control, a, a team 
the second in the NCAA in the number of draw controls per game. Won that battle 14-7 to against Adelphi on Friday and just continuing to dominate today. Clock is on their side. Possession of the ball on their side right now. Having to force the Warriors to come out and step up just a little bit more on defense, try to force the turnover, as Kira mentioned. And, you know, a situation that they're familiar with. This is a, an ESU mm -hmm. team that really battles from behind later in the game. But also with putting that high pressure on beyond the 12 meter, this is a team that's really versed in that. We've seen their communication be really high on the interior and on the weak side. Forty seconds on the shot clock, plenty of time. Little stutter step by Klein, dumps it off to Malcolm and scooped up there off of the loose ball by Mackenzie Gagan. And this is exactly who you want the the player to have the ball for ESU and settling it on your attack. Defense stands tall. Just sewn and picked up. And a timeout now by you, Indy. Kind of a little bit surprised on that one. But we will step. We are 8.33 away from one team hoisting the coveted National Championship Trophy. Will it be Cassidy King and her teammates from U Indy? Or will it be the Warriors of East Strasbury? And we will set and restart here now out of the timeout. James Delaney wanted to talk it over with his team with possession of the ball. And a three goal lead. And if you're you, Indy, it's really a possession game for you. You're gonna get the high pressure. And I think if you're in you, Indy as well, don't be too scared or hesitant to throw it back and in, into your midfield. Uh, and really work mm -hmm. the width of the field from sideline to sideline as well when the time really starts to crunch down. And you're looking at running your play at about 25 to 30 seconds on that shot clock. Here's Lagos trying to go! Extended goal line. She's really feeling it. <laughs> she is in the groove. Recycles the shot clock to a minute. Christina Sato trying to draw Mirotunda out defensively. Romig. Oh, the little flip inside of Fowler, it bounces and it's loose. It bounces over the top of the goal. <laughs> How about that, 10 seconds, nine seconds on the shot clock. Roaming up top, they've got to hurry. And the defense stands, nicely done by the Warriors. Quick outlet now to Maddie Heck. And also not over committing on that high pressure and getting beat when you're already extended and pulled apart in the defense. It was really good diligence coming from ESU, and, and now you have to run your attack. You have to run it quickly if you want to start to bite away at a three-goal deficit. Yeah. 
Great movement inside. And the response, and Gianna LaDuc for the Warriors with the goal. A two goal game now for ESU to try to come back in this one. Had three goals in the game against Queens. A lot of that in the early going, but I think DeLuke is a player who just gets stronger as the game goes on because she can read the defense, because she can read the tendencies and understand the tendencies of the defense that she's going up against. It's just a great adjustment for this player to figure that out, and that's really high lacrosse IQ and a lot of natural athleticism coming from a player like DeLuke, but more importantly, a score scoring when she needs to and stepping up for her team. Gianna LaDuke's first goal of the game. That stops a 4-0 UND run with 6.06 now to go. And, and that's really got to be an emphasis for ESU is off of that draw control, just trying to get the ball down to the ground and giving yourself time of possession. The UND is really in the driver's seat at this point. And at the, you know, now it's just a matter of, of keep away and getting close enough to the net with under 30 seconds to play something near it. Klein tried to go inside quickly to Sona and that ball's loose on the ground. And somehow, Joey Fowler comes up out of it. Scrappy. 45 seconds on the shot clock. Klein spins inside right into the double team of Pokorica who comes up with the ball and it will stay with the Warriors. 4.40 to go. Bogata and Leduc upfield already for the Warriors. Bogata flashing through. Great job, Kiki Fitzpatrick turns in the middle and awfully difficult one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Cassidy King and we have a one goal game. Excellent execution com coming from ESU in scoring quickly. 1v1 defense, Matura Rotonda loses the ball, quickly picks it up and that's a great spin dodge coming from ESU, gets on the inside, switches hand, great composure with Fitzpatrick and keeping the ball in her cross. This team has some life in them on the attack and all the more important place on getting their next possession. Four eleven to go. One goal differential. And a first time national champion ready to be crowned. And that's exactly what ESU wants to do. Get it on the ground, fight for those 50-50 balls and the ground balls. Great, great ability by Bigata. So strong along around that uh, draw circle for in, in Bagata and a player like her. You see Gianna DeLuke is being face guarded right along the goal line extended. 
by Madison Phillips. So this is a player that they're going to try to eliminate in the attack just with how uh, you know, explosive Duluth can be along that goal line extended. Maddie Fowler picking up the yellow card. And for Fowler, that is her second yellow, Kara. Yeah, so she will be out for the remainder of this game with two yellow cards. But we talked about the situational awareness that UND has and also the practices that they have throughout the course of the fall. They have practiced for every single scenario. So this isn't something that they aren't used to and how they need to adapt with time ticking down on a big stage like this. Bagata flashing through. This is Conklin with the ball up top. Maddie Heck trying to change hands. Has it knocked away momentarily? Bella Shore with a big turnover. Yeah, and a timeout taken by Uindy. Great combination of defenders that you've seen today. Amy Vay, Bella Shore, Michaela Montgomery, Kara Antonucci getting it done for the Greyhounds. We will step aside as well. Come on. Welcome back to Lindenwood University, home of the Division II Women's National Championship game. We are under three minutes to go. ESU has clawed back into this game. Kara, back-to-back -back goals by LeDuc and Fitzpatrick. And it's a one-goal game right now. Warriors a player up as Antonucci being faced by pressure here. And even Cassidy King being forced to come out of the goal cage here. And this is an aspect of, of UND's game that they take a lot of pride in is how they can clear the ball. And this is a team that has speed. They have confidence to do it. But there couldn't be one more important clear than this situation right here. Montgomery getting it back to Cassidy King. And the flashing Bella Shore tries to race up the sideline. Nice job defensively by the Warriors. They'll catch a breath for a second, get some numbers up. Hard whistle there as that ball will come back, though, to Bella Shore. Getting into Abby Lagos' hands. 17 seconds on the shot clock. Will Lagos go to goal here? No. Sato looks for the cutter and Quinn! Quinn Malcolm with the goal. That could finish it off. If you took a, lock, uh, took a look at Quinn Malcolm's performance in that semifinal match against Adelphi, this is a player that had the hot stick. And she has patience. She can get behind the defense. She finds the perfect opportunity to cut. Have not seen her been able to get into that passing lane inside the eight meter, but there could not be a better moment for her to figure that situation out, to receive that feed, and to put it home for you, Indy. Timeout called on the field before we close out this minute 40, but you're right, Leah. That could have been the final goal here for you, Indy, in order to seal that victory. Quinn Malcolm had a hat trick in the semifinals and uh, capping it off today with her first goal of the game, waiting mm -hmm. to the very last seconds here. 140 to go. It did not look good coming out of the back for mm -hmm. the Greyhounds. Great pressure there by the Warriors. They got some work here to do coming out of the timeout. And it will all start on the draw, Kara. And just UND's capability to score late 
I really can't talk enough about how this team owns that possession part of the game and can run their offense and score when they need to with time ticking down. Speaking with the players yesterday, it raised the question of, was your Friday semifinal game against Adelphi the most complete performance UND has played this season? They said no. <laughs> and I said, well, what does that look like? And they said, well, why don't you watch and see tomorrow? <laughs> Just a, a team that, that is looking to put a, a whole game together. They want this game to be their best game of the season and heavily matched throughout the entire contest. Leah, I think this has been an absolute battle between both of these teams. Absolutely. Been fun to watch from our end. Certainly has. Uh, very entertaining all weekend long. Both teams breaking the huddle. Great crowd on hand all weekend long here at Lindenwood. And we'll see if Bagot is able to get this ball back down to the ground off of the initial draw. And this is still a, a two possession game. A lot of time in the cross with 140 left for ESU to tie this up. Begata flips it to herself. That was huge. And they're over the line. They get it into Lagos' hands. Interesting now, Lagos will race the opposite way. You called it, Kira. You thought that they might go backwards a little bit. And really, the clock is totally on their side right now. Yeah, and I think if you are you, Wendy, you just want to be able to get it down to the opposing baseline, the end line, and just toss it off when that time is expiring on your shot clock. That only gives the opponent 10 seconds to get the ball through transition and try to get something placed on net. But really, a team that has maturity with in this situation and in this scenario, uh, ahead by a few goals and time ticking down. And Coach Delaney wanting to take a timeout. His team in possession of the ball. 46 seconds on the shot clock. 54.9 on the game clock. And James Delaney, it was interesting to, to hear what he said about how this team has not been content at practice all week. They want to be able to close out the season with a national championship. And, you know, he also said that with 18 to 22 year olds, when they make all, when, you know, when you win your region, you advance to the tournament, you might just say, okay, that's it. You know, right. good for me. I'm done for the year, but not this squad. This squad is squad is intrinsically motivated. They motivate each other. Tremendous amount of respect and trust yes. that they have for each other. Even when it comes to the mental health and well being of these athletes, you know, these are student athletes that constantly check in with each other, support each other in every way possible, which was really encouraging to hear uh, as a young woman in, in this world and what they do for each other off the field. One of the key pieces for you, Indy, today has been number 22 on the attack, the lefty Sarah Klein. And she's doing with a lot of pressure collapse on her inside the eight meter. A really gifted athlete, has a nose for the net, excellent capability to choose the shot that she wants, but really being able to get it done when her team needs her to get a goal. Four goals on the day for Klein. 56 on the season. As the Greyhounds and the Warriors step back out into the field. Again, 46 seconds on the shot clock, 54-9 on the game clock. And Tanucci. And that ball goes back over off of the turnover by the Warriors. Nice job. Metarotunda up top, Fitzpatrick. And now ECU, uh, excuse me, AESU wants a timeout. The Warriors will discuss it.
They've got to go to goal quick and and get back into the draw circle and they have still have some work to mm -hmm. be done. Yep. But they've got to get to the goal quick. We haven't really seen them do that, Kara, all game. So the balance of that, not having done it all game, throw you off a little bit or, you know, not being accustomed to, to going to go quickly like that? Yeah, I, I think it's a team that was it came out in the first quarter of the semifinal game a little frazzled, so mm -hmm. just settling your nerves in with that. But I thought what was more impressive is how they defended that clear. That's exactly yes. what they wanted to do. They wanted to pin Kerr Hutchinson on the sideline, come away with the turnover here, and then you, you just have to move quickly. You know, as you mentioned, Leah, and it, it was interesting when we attended the practice yesterday, they do the visual, 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 visualization. Yes, <laughs> visualization, <laughs> yep. yep. Of uh, at the end of practice. So, you know, this is a team that has settled their nerves. They're comfortable, they're confident. Um, and you just try to imagine, you know, each, every, each and every step, every breath that you're gonna take the next day in order to keep your composure and, and be calm in these high stress situations. Good position of the ball for Maddie Heck. She'll wait for the whistle here with 34.4 to go in the game. Heck, little stutter step. Up over the top, off of the quick release. Bella Shore just kind of wanted to get a body on her, not bother her too much. But getting back inside and getting ripped and no foul called. And now the Greyhounds can run this clock out. They get the ball to Cassidy King. And the U Indy Greyhounds win their first national championship in women's lacrosse 11 9. The 2022 national champions hoisting the trophy. Total team effort. Kara Antonucci and Cassidy King there, the first two. Raise that trophy up. And a super effort by the Greyhounds. Great effort as well, Kara, by East Strasburg today as the runners up. Yeah, it was a tight game throughout the entire contest. Both of these teams have to be really proud of what they've been able to accomplish this season. We saw great competition, not just today, Leah, but throughout the course of the whole weekend, including those semifinal matchups. And these girls have been through a lot with COVID, with cancellations, and just the ability to fight another day. And what do you do first? Well, you bring that trophy over and you enjoy it with your fans, and that's exactly what U Indy is doing it right now. A great contingent of fans on hand here at uh, Lindenwood University. And the celebration begins for the Greyhounds. Cassidy King coming on uh, in that second quarter of, uh, third quarter actually of the game, Kara, really solid defensively. With the trophy right now, handing it off to her teammates. And this team exhibits a lot of leadership, a lot of leadership qualities, what it means to be a leader and helping your team get to the national championship stage and see a lot of parents down there, but also former players here for you, Wendy, traveling back to be able to witness this moment. This is a program that's only been at the Division II level for seven years, and James Delaney able to coach this team to a national championship in the fifth season at the helm. 
And this is a squad that was just knocking on the door, hadn't even won a national tournament game until this season. And here they are hoisting the 2022 trophy. Please stay tuned on NCAA.com for the official trophy presentation. We'd like to uh, thank our crew here at Lindenwood University, the university, the host itself, as well as our broadcast crew that helped to bring you all the sights and sounds this weekend. My broadcast partner, Carol Lentz, great to be back with you again doing uh, championship action and congratulations to you, Indy Greyhounds, winners of the 2022 NCAA Division II Women's Lacrosse Championship. I'm Leah Secondo, and that's a wrap from St. Charles, Missouri. And we thank Lindawood University for their partnership, commitment, 
and success in hosting this year's national championship. Thank you to everyone with Linwood University. Presenting the awards is Regan McCauthy, NCAA Division II Women's Lacrosse Sports Committee Chair. First up is the runner-up team in this year's NCAA Division II Women's Lacrosse Championship. Finishing with a record of 20 and two on the year, the East Stroudsburg Warriors. Will the following individuals please come forward to receive your awards? Will head coach Zenny Bakros Yoder and team captains please come forward to accept the trophy? Congratulations once again to the East Stroudsburg University Warriors on a great season. Let's give them a round of applause to all these outstanding student athletes, coaches, and staff. And now we would like to present the 2022 NCAA. And now, will the following individuals please come forward to receive your awards? Number three, Rachel Lambert. Number four, Kara Antonucci. My apologies, wrong roster. Number one, Maddie Heck. Number two, Elena Olson. Number three, McKenna Conklin. Number four, Taylor Vara. Number five, Lauren Newfield. Number six, Caitlin Cowden. Number eight, Gianna LaDuke. Number nine, Ali Sweeney. Number 10, Jamison Kernigan. Number 11, Juliana Montalto. Number 12, Shannon Dent. Number 13, Kaylee Pakrivka. Number 14, Mary Fitzsimmons. Number 16, Olivia Wenrick. Number 17, Chelsea Alley. Number 18, Kristen Andrachek. Number 19, Kiki Fitzpatrick. Number 20, Olivia Chori. Number 21, Maggie Sell. Number 22, Kendall Nestor. Number 23, Hannah Campbell. Number 24, Emily Mitterotunda. Number 28, Sophia Grafeo. Number 29, Madison Bagata. Number 30, Claire Hoffman. 
Number 32, Mackenzie Gagan. Number 42, Mac Maloney. Head coach, Zenny Rakos Yoder. Assistant coach, Rachel Ward. And assistant coach, Amber Newman. Let's give a round of applause for all these outstanding student athletes, coaches, and staff. Once again, the East Stroudsburg University Warriors. And now we present the 2022 NCAA Division II Women's Lacrosse All Tournament Team. Will the members of the all-tournament team remain on the field for a photo after all the all-tournament team members have been announced? At midfield, from Queens, Sydney Bracken. At goalkeeper, from Queens, Sharon Muffet. At attack, from Adelphi, Christina McCabe. At defense, from Adelphi, Lillian Kaladinsky. At midfield, from East Stroudsburg, sophomore number 24, Emily Mita Rotunda. At midfield, from East Stroudsburg, graduate student number one, Maddie Heck. At attack, from East Stroudsburg, graduate student number eight, Gianna LaDuke. At attack, from U Indy, graduate student number 10, Abigail Lagos. At attack from U Indy, sophomore number 22, Sarah Klein. At defense from U Indy, graduate student number 16, Michaela Montgomery. At attack from U Indy, junior number 7, Quinn Malcolm. And the 2022 Most Outstanding Player, as voted by the members of the D2 Women's Lacrosse Sports Committee. From University of Indianapolis, graduate student Peyton Romig. Let's hear it once again for your 2022 All-Tournament Team. And now, the 2022 NCAA Division II Lacrosse National Champion. Finishing with a record of 22-1 and on the season, the University of Indianapolis Greyhounds. Once again, presenting the awards is Reagan McCarthy, NCAA Division II Women's Lacrosse Sports Committee Chair. Will the following individuals please come forward to receive 
your awards. Number three, Rachel Lambert. Number four, Kara Antonucci. Number five, Madison Phillips. Number six, Mackenzie Wynn. Number seven, Quinn Malcolm. Number eight, Kylie Manser. Number 10, Abigail Lagos. Number 11, Christina Sato. Number 13, Jess Sunin. Number 14, Amy Vey. Number 15, Bella Shore. Number 16, Michaela Montgomery. Number 17, Skylar Constantino. Number 19, Emily Gunther. Number 20, Peyton Romig. Number 22, Sarah Klein. Number 23, Cassidy King. Number 25, Delaney Starr. Number 28, Kat Green. Number 31, Audrey Moran. Number 32, Olivia Grogan. Number 33, Caroline Wood. Number 50, Allison Meyer. Number 60, Anna Ziemba. Number 77, Joey Fowler. Number 91, Riley Taylor. Assistant coach, Kelly Dow. Assistant coach, Sophia Leva. And head coach, James Delaney. And now, will head coach James Delaney and the team captains please come forward to accept the national championship trophy. Once again, congratulations to the University of Indianapolis Greyhounds on your 2022 NCAA Division II Women's Lacrosse National Championship.